you still live in Colombia. You don't live in the United States. No. So I grew up in Spain. Yes. Then I moved to the UK when my dad died when I was 18. And I moved last year to Colombia after 25 years. So do you, do you get back to Spain or to the UK? Or obviously you're traveling here, but really, probably just to do this interview and a few other professional things. Do, do, you, do you ever go back knowing that there's so much baggage with your old life there? Or do you say, no, I've got a new life. I'm sticking around Colombia. I, mean, I went to Colombia with a mission. <laughs> mm. I went there not because I w- wanted to move. It was never in my heart coming back again to my roads, coming back again to my family or to that place because I always thought if the Lord took me out of this place, it's because he wanted something better. But the Lord... I'm, I'm sorry, you, you grew up in Spain or you grew up in Colombia? Spain. You grew up in Spain. I so was born in Colombia. But you were born in Colombia. Okay, got it. Got it. I was born there, moved to Spain when I was five. Yeah. And then after my dad died, when I was 18, I moved to the UK. I met my husband there, got married, have kids, and then moved back to Colombia. God sent me back there hmm. to, to um, establish a new ministry. And the word that the Lord gave me was, I'm sending you back as I sent Moses to his people. Hmm. So I believe that also because of the experience that I went through, the occultism, there's so much witchcraft in Latin America. Is there? It's, is, is normal, is the daily bread. I, you're walking on the street and you see people doing witchcraft in the shops. And I'm like, that for me, that for me is, is not normal, right? Seeing in the street and in the shops, like the, the culture for me was quite like shocking. And uh, so after this one year, this year that I have been there, I have to, you know, again, connect to the culture, to the people, what, what is moving around. But I believe the Lord sent me back is because I had an understanding of how things work in the spiritual realm. Now I have been set free and now he's taking me back to help my people too. It is the witchcraft in Latin America, is that what Santeria is? Because I've heard of Santeria and I was interested in it because it's got, it looks kind of Christian. Specifically, it's got, it's got almost the aesthetic of Catholicism, but it's totally perverted. It's to- It's like an in- inversion of the religion where like, there's this thing they worship, the uh, Saint Death, Santa Muerte. Santa Muerte. And, mm-hmm. So what is it though? It's like a, it's just like a pagan syncretism so, with Catholicism. So Santeria, right? The Santeria, it has uh, seven orishas, okay? Yemayá, Ochun, Changó, so all of these goddess that went the Africa, that they come from Nigeria. In Nigeria, mm. you have the seven, the same ones. So when the Africans, you, you know, they got slaves and they move yeah. to Cuba, they move to IT. They, they, this is where it's predominant, the Santeria, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, these places, the culture mix with the culture of the slaves. So sh- and this is why, you know, the principality that, that I was consecrated to is called the Indian Huacaipuro. He's part of the three Venezuelan powers. So there are different courts. You have the core, um, what's the name? You have the, core, the, the Indian core, which is these three, Maria Leonza, Negro Felipe, Indian Huacaipuro, that these are the, the, the three principalities of Venezuela. But then you have the Santeria, right? And this is where all of these others. So, all of these come from the root of Africa, these, these goddess, these demons of high rank. And at the time of doing the Santeria and the witchcraft, right, what happens is that now it has mixed with Catholicism. Even my great-grandmother, for healing, she used to use San Gregorio, San Gregory, for healing. And, uh, and, and other saints that she, you, that, that she used to use. Mixing and them up with this mixing. demon stuff from Africa. So Exactly. So it's quite common there that you will see Catholics so involved in witchcraft. And they say, I'm Catholic, I'm going to church, I'm practicing, I'm doing all of my at the same time, they're doing witchcraft. S- someone asked me about this, one, this, this Santa Muerte. And I said, you know, listen, I wasn't totally perfectly catechized, but I never heard of this Santa Muerte anywhere in my catechism. or any. I never read this in the Bible or in any of the, my Catholic teaching. And I, then I stumbled on this santeria thing that must that must be very scandalous too because if if these people just in good faith grow up and they think that catholicism is when you invoke like demons to practice witchcraft then 
they might be doing these bad things without even really knowing it. Yeah. And that was like part of my family too. My great grandmother, she used to go to church, but then she used to just go home and be a medium. So it's part, especially of the Latin culture, is so strong wow. to see Catholics actually involved in witchcraft and with the saints and all, and all of that. That's why. But are they are they aware of it? I just assumed that they're not aware of it. But are are they aware of the contradiction there? No. 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 Wow. My great grandmother Santa's used to use the Bible too. <laughs> she used to have the Bible open in Psalms twenty three, Psalms ninety one. And even like when my dad died, you know, this white witch, um, she told my mom, do this prayer every night, even though she was a witch. She told my mom, do this prayer, Psalm 91, Psalm 23, every night. And we did that for one month, every single night. So the, the, they understand that, you know, there's something in the Bible. I go to church, you know, but at the same time, I'm using the saints and I'm using even like some rituals that they do they actually ask God to, to bless and to guide them and the saints to, to, to do it. Intercede. And so, wow. Mm -hmm. Now, what about, I guess, the only other occult thing I've heard that in, invokes some Catholic practices but flips them would be outright Satanism, where they do the Black Mass, which is a parody of the, of the traditional Holy Mass. But you never got involved in outright Satanism. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't, but I, but I have an understanding of how things in Satanism work and the, the same thing, the blood the rituals, because we were doing blood rituals too, and animal and things like that. For You were sacrificing for animals? For certain rituals, you know. In Santeria, it's super common. In Santeria, it's super common to kill maybe a chicken or a... Um, cows, uh, goats, sorry, cows, no, goats, things like that is, is, is normally is part of the ritual because you need blood. One time I was walking along Santa Monica Beach in California and underneath Santa Monica Pier, my buddy and I were walking along, we found a beheaded chicken and I had no idea what this was and I, I joked, I said, oh, I guess he ran out of the restaurant, you know, he made it out of the kitchen before they could cook him. But my buddy said, no, you know, this is probably some voodoo thing, probably some witchcraft ritual. And I didn't really believe him when he said it, but there's a lot of occult stuff out in California. There is. They probably California, probably was there. You, you see spiritually what it moves in there. And when you see there's a lot of sexual immorality, sexual immorality comes together with the occultism. Sexual immorality moves with witchcraft. It hmm. also moves with poverty and death, addictions. So when you see in an area that's moving those type of things, there's some sort of witchcraft. 